Well, let's get more on this now from the award-winning African affairs analyst, James Wood. Uh, thanks very much indeed, James, for coming in. President Dos Santos, as you heard there, has said similar things in the past. Is he serious this time? Are Angolans beginning to look to life after what some say is his autocratic rule? Well, um, first of all, um, I think for the Angolans who want him out, you hope that that is the case. But we have seen over the past 15 years where he's announced on several occasions that he is standing down only to run for election again and win. Um, the MPL is a very powerful um, political party. Um, he is seen as the individual who took Angola out of civil war to prosperity, as, if you want to call it that, to the development that is happening. So to, to look at whether he's really going to hold to his word, I think there's a couple dynamics to really focus on. And these dynamics range from how the um, economy is currently doing. Mm. Some individuals have mentioned that um, it could be the case that he is feeling the pressure, that the economy is suffering, the country is not moving in the direction it should be. It's Absolutely. a heavily reliant um, country on oil. And as you can see, the oil prices have slumped um, significantly. Um, for example, um, in 2014, the oil revenues amounted to $60 billion. Mm. 20, um, 2015, that was 30, $34 billion. A massive slump in actually the value of oil um, and what, what they're actually generating. So, so essentially that patronage system that he's been accused of using to keep himself in power for decades may now be slipping from his grasp because of this terrible economic crisis. I think um, I, would, I, would, I would move away from looking at it that he is losing um, a lot of the resources to, mm. for patronage because, as we do know, um, his, his daughter, he himself, they, they control Angola. Um, his daughter is head of um, Senegal. If you mm. control Senegal, you control Rwanda. You control Rwanda, you control Angola. So there's a lot of resources at their disposal. But um, what I actually think is that, personally, in my opinion, is that it's come to a point where ideas are starting, they're starting to run out of ideas. Mm. They need fresh people to come in to take the mantle. But the question is, is that when he steps down, is he really stepping down or is he just going to be in the, back, in the, in the background controlling everything with people who he's um, strategically placed in that and position? And that's the critical question. Based on what you've seen and your uh, analysis, who's likely to succeed him? And as you said there, will it merely be a change of face and with the regime essentially remaining the same? Well, um, first of all, before I go to who will be the likely candidate mm. to replace him, I think the regime itself, I don't see much changing. I think these policies will still be carried out and most likely it'll be the MP MPLA taking over again. Right. The MPLA um, announced that, well, not officially yet, right. but um, they did announce that the Minister of Defense, um, yes. João um, Lorenzo, will be, will be taking over. Mm. Um, he's, he's probably, out of the candidates that they do have, he's the one candidate who hasn't got um, a family of influence within the political setup. Right. So he appeals to the general public as compared to um, the current Vice President, um, Antonio Vincente, who um, was at Sonangal, who also worked on um, Ministry of Defense, who right. has a great image in the oil and gas sector. But if the MPL is trying to diversify, they don't want somebody who's got the reputation of the oil and gas sector. Dos Santos became president in 1979, but before that, his MPLA government was at war with UNITA rebels in a conflict that saw Angola be in, a, in a sort of vicious proxy, or become a vicious proxy battleground for the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union. Well, um, I think when we look at this background, um, we can look at the proxy war, that, which is very damaging to the country. Mm. But the advantage that that has had to actually to the president himself is that if you go into the rural areas, people look at him as their savior, the mm. individual who took them out of conflict, brought stability. And what we need to remember is that Angola has only been at peace since 2002. Mm. So despite looking at his legacy, we also need yes. to look at what he's actually accomplished since 2002 to being the third largest economy in Africa. Absolutely. It's, so not, it's not a, yeah, absolutely. So, so if President Dos Santos does go next year, seems probable, what will be his legacy? I think um, his legacy, I think now that, that would depend on which angle you're looking at it at from. Um, if you're looking at the educated middle class in Angola, his legacy will be an individual who held on to power, who used patronage systems to empower himself and his family. That's the educated middle class. But as we do know, in a lot of our countries in Africa, most of the voting actually comes from the rural areas, mm. which constitutes the vast majority of the population. Now, these individuals will look at him as an individual who safeguarded their rights, who took them out of civil war. Not to forget, Angola went 1961 to 1975 fighting a liberation war. From 75 until 2002, this was a civil war in the country. And I think mm. there was no negotiating out of that civil war. This was literally people had to die for Absolutely. this war. So for those who will look at that, they'll look at him as one of the individuals who was able to lift that. So I think his legacy will be very split. But um, that, that is not to run away from the oppression that individuals have experienced in Angola, um, the lack of freedoms for certain people. 
But um, overall, I think his legacy will be very split within Angola itself. Um, but I think it's the tide in Africa is changing. People are looking for more democratic institutions mm. to develop and new ideas, new thoughts. And we're a young population. We need vibrancy to come into the way of governing. So people like him have been swept aside? I would hope so. <laughs> OK. James, thank you very much indeed. James Woods, the award-winning African affairs analyst.